Hello and welcome to our Federal Lunch and Learn series, session number three, FEHB and Medicare in Retirement. Um, my name is James Campbell. I'm going to be joined by my good friend and um, associate, Justin Pierce. And we're going to be diving into talking about uh, your federal health insurance, Medicare, retirement options, how they can integrate together, what your options are. And of course, like we always talk about how to best maximize uh, the whole deal. So we are federal employee benefit advisors. Uh, between Justin and I, we have over 20 years of experience of working specifically for federal employees with retirement and financial services. Uh, so this is coming from a wealth of knowledge. We're excited to share that with you today. We hope you get a lot out of this. Um, we, if you would like, you can ask some questions in the Q&A. We're going to try to be real respectful and tight on people's time because this is considered a, a lunch and learn. We will try to grab and answer a few of those. If we see some common threads on those questions, uh, we'll try to answer a couple of those live after we get done. But this should be a 30-minute presentation with a, maybe 5, 10 minutes of answering some Q&A at the end. All right, so I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about myself. Um, Here's a picture of, uh, whoops, went one too far there. There's a picture of me and my beautiful family, um, my wife and three kids. And um, they're the reason I get up every morning and, and try to do better today than I did yesterday. Uh, they're an inspiration to me and they keep me very busy. So I love them a lot. Um, as, as a financial advisor, I have three professional designations. Um, I am a fiduciary financial advisor. And that's important to understand that I'm required by my licensure to look out for other people's best interests, not my own. Uh, so it's a big deal. Not a lot of people out there in the financial realm sector uh, are fiduciaries. So it is an important thing to look for when you're going to talk to someone and get some advice uh, and some help with retirement and finances. Carry two professional designations that specifically apply to federal employees. The first one's called a Chartered Federal Employee Benefit Consultant. Uh, the second one's called a federal retirement consultant. Important to know that both of those designations are recognized by FINRA, who's the Financial Regulatory Authority. Both of them require annual testing. Uh, we get to do these really fun proctored tests every year to make sure we're still um, uh, experts in federal benefits and retirement. So we know your world inside and out. We've been doing this for a long time with federal employees. Uh, we only work with federal employees. Obviously, we end up with some referrals and stuff, family members and stuff like that. But our focus is federal employees and helping them maximize their retirement. I am a, uh, one of the co-authors of The Informed Fed, which is a book just on federal benefits and retirement. Lots of good information in that book. Uh, we're going to tell you some ways that you can get a free PDF copy of that book um, uh, through today's presentation. And very important that I have to disclose that I am not a federal employee. We are not a federal agency. As a matter of fact, OPM cannot, will not hire financial professionals like us to do what we do. It's legal and we're allowed to do what we do, but we're just not hired or paid by the government. So what's great is, is typically the way we work is a win-win situation. When we do help people with financial services, we're typically getting paid directly from the financial institutions that we represent, that we help with. Um, we can help with a whole slew of different things on retirement, like uh, insurance, investments, um, annuities, estate planning. We have some other uh, um, departments that we're going to be opening up in the future. Justin's going to touch on that here a little bit through our um, uh, through our presentation. But that's a little bit about me. Without any further ado, let me introduce my good friend and partner, Justin Pierce. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Justin Pierce here. Nice to see you. I'm going to quickly go through a little bit about who I am. Uh, this is my family. This was taken in Arizona. I recently moved to Charlotte, North Carolina last year this time. And my wife, Rachel, and then my four children, Allie, Zach, Maddie, and Lily. And I also am a fiduciary, just like James. And it is very important that you are working with a fiduciary. Again, fiduciaries are required by the SEC to put your needs ahead of their own and maintain no conflict of interest. It's so important this day and age to work with fiduciaries. And same federal designations that James has, I as well have Charter Federal Employee Benefit Consultant, Federal Retirement Consultant. So we're specifically trained to teach federal employees about their benefits and their retirement, and then specifically recommend solutions that might put them into a better situation 
as a fiduciary federal retirement planner. Um, I have uh, 14 years. Um, I keep saying I need to change that slide. It's actually 15 years of experience, and we do a lot of other types of education, webinars, seminars, uh, union workshops. Uh, we, we specialize in our one-on-one -on -one, uh, virtual consultation, though we'll talk to you a little bit more about that in a couple of minutes. I also, uh, like James mentioned, co-authored with James the Informed Fed. We'll show you how you can get a copy of that. And then I, along with James, am not a federal employee and um, I'm not a uh, hired agent. In fact, OPM will never hire nor contract uh, someone in our situation, financial planner, to do what we do. That would create a conflict of interest. So we're, we're allowed to do what we do, but we're not paid to do what we do by the government. So uh, let me introduce you to um, our other federal retirement consultants. So it's myself, it's James, it's these five other individuals that all have that same federal designation uh, that James and I have. And these folks are, are very skilled at what they do. They're going to sit down with you, explain to you your benefits, maybe um, answer any questions that you might have and help give you a much clearer picture of what your benefits package and ultimately what your retirement uh, benefits package looks like. Okay, so you know, within our uh, company, like James had mentioned, we, you don't pay us anything. There, there's no cost to, to sit down with us. As you become a client of ours, you get access to more and more services and uh, one of the things that uh, we're bringing on uh, uh, fairly soon is a um, uh, tax uh, office. So we're going to be able to help people with their with their taxes at, at, a, at a much lower rate, a very affordable rate for our, for our clients. Um, we also, uh, James is going to be hitting on this a little bit later, but uh, we're, he's going to talk to you about our, our new Medicare division that we're going to be opening up pretty soon. But these are our folks that are going to help you if James and I aren't there to help you. Um, one of these uh, fine individuals will be, and they're assisted by uh, some fine uh, ladies as well. So let's go ahead and get through a couple quick disclosures. I know we only got about 23 minutes, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. We're not making any investment recommendations today. Uh, there's not much to disclose. You already know that we're financial planners. We are not federal employees, so let's just go past that. Here is how you can get a copy of our book, okay? So there's two ways. One, you can pay for it. on It's on Amazon, or if you'd rather get it for free in the form of a digital version, Schedule a consultation with us and you get a free copy of this. And the consultations, again, are complimentary. There's nothing that you have to pay. There's no um, obligation. There's no hard sale that you have to worry about. We're very consultative. We're going to teach you about your six main federal benefits. And let me show you a little bit about um, uh, the details of what that consultation looks like. We're going to project your pension TSP incomes. We're going to talk about different strategies. We're going to teach you about four additional benefits that you have uh, a couple of them now and, and, and a couple of them in the future as you retire. What we do is we help you retire comfortably and confidently. And we're always trying to help you retire sooner than you might think possible. And through good planning, through knowing the system, we can help set you up for what we hope and what, what you hope for might be a, a earlier retirement than you thought. That's our goal. And we've got another event coming up, and this is going to be our, our main webinar. We're going to cover your six main benefits sort of on a surface level here, uh, go into some forms needed for retirement. And these are good because after the hour of information is over, James and I are going to stick, a, stick around as long as, as long as you want. We're going to do a lengthy Q&A session, about 30 minutes to an hour. So make sure you talk to all of your colleagues and let them know this is a the time they can get from the horse's mouth, some really good information about their benefits, and uh, we'd be happy to stick around as long as possible for that. So that's June 15th. There's a link going into the chat box right now. Go ahead and click that to register there. Again, forward that to some friends, some colleagues around the office, um, and we'll take care of whoever might want to join us that day. Our next Lunch and Learn series, and before I go into that, let me quickly talk about our new website. So we're going to be launching a website sometime in the middle of June. And we'll be sending everybody an email once it's launched so that you can check it out. But it's going to contain a wealth of resources, which we'll continually be adding to. One of those resources is the other Lunch and Learn series that you might have missed, the first two. Those are going to be up on there. So you're going to be able to see the first two. This one's going to be on there. All of our Lunch and Learns are going to be on there. 
plus a lot more educational videos that we're going to be adding along the way. We're going to have forms needed for retirement. We're going to have resources that you're going to want access to. So make sure that you take a, a couple of minutes to check out our new website once that goes live. But our next Lunch and Learn, which you can register for now if you want, we're putting a link in the chat, is July 20th at 1230 Eastern. And it's going to be on FEGLI, Federal Employee Group Life Insurance in Retirement. We'll help you understand it now, but more importantly, what your options are in retirement. This is a very confusing benefit, so we're going to break it all down for you. And then, um, let's see, this is this is where I'm going to turn it over to James. James, rock and roll. All right, let's get down to the meat and potatoes of this. We're talking about FEHB, your Federal Employee Health Benefit, and what continuation options you have for retirement. So let's first talk about um, qualification. To qualify to take your uh, health insurance into retirement, you need to be covered under that plan for five consecutive years, including the day that you retire, okay? So it's very important to get those five years, get yourself covered for those last five years uh, so that you can take this into retirement. It really is one of the best benefits that they allow you to take into retirement. And just a quick overview, and I'm, it's, it's point number three in here, but I'm jumping straight to it. The government pays the majority of this for you. I don't know if a lot of you realize this. What you pay in your biweekly paycheck is only 28% of the actual plan cost. The government's paying about 72% of that. And they will do that for you for the rest of your life if you qualify and take it into retirement. So uh, historically, one of the best things they offer, um, and that's how you qualify. Got to carry it for those five years. Um, you can carry family members on there. I get this question a lot. Are they going to kick my wife off or my husband off when I go into retirement? No. So any qualified member can stay on there, spouse, uh, dependent children, um, you know, children with disabilities, all those things, all those things still apply. It's basically just like the employee plan, but you're now an annuitant instead of an employee, but they're covering the same amounts. You still have the same options. You can still change your plan any open season. All right. Um, deductions. This is the main thing that changes in retirement. When you're working, almost everybody's on a 26 paycheck uh, pay schedule. So they take your annual FEHB premium, they divide it by 26, and you make 26 smaller payments, right, to pay the same, to, to pay the annual amount. Uh, in retirement, you're only going to get 12 paychecks. Your annual percentage is still going to be the same. So you're going to still pay, you know, about 28% of that year's plan cost, but it's in 12 payments. So it's a little bit more than double what you have taken out of your regular paycheck. It's going to come out of your annuity once a month. And this is, this is why for most people outside of uh, postal, which I'll, I'll touch on that in a second, um, some people say, oh, it gets more expensive in retirement. No, it doesn't. It's just that you're making less payments to pay the same annual amount. So that's where the confusion can set it. It does not get more expensive uh, unless you're postal, postal, you get a little bit discounted rate while you're working. So with postal, you'll pay like any other annuitant in retirement. So your cost will go up slightly. Uh, but the main difference is that you're paying 12 times a year instead of 26. All right. And then the other change that happens, it's it's a, a slight disadvantage. While you're working, it's pre-tax deductions that pay for your uh, federal health insurance, which reduces your taxable income, give you a tax break. In retirement, it is post-tax dollars that fund, uh, that pay those premiums. So it you get a little, you don't get the same tax break in retirement. Most people in a lower tax bracket in retirement, so um, it's not going to be a huge hit, but important to know that it's post-tax dollars when you go into retirement. So that's that's FEHB on how you can continue and what the continuation of that is. You basically keep it as an employee. You just pay once a month instead of every other week. Still change your plan in the open season. All right, for Medicare. Now, uh, this is a mystical thing for a lot of people. Uh, so I'm going to break it down. Um, and help you understand what Medicare is and how this can work with your FEHB in retirement. Um, you're eligible at age 65, okay? And it's optional. Uh, once again, except for postal retirees, that, that bill just went through. For postal retirees, they're required at 65 and retired to take on Medicare A and B to keep the postal health insurance. Everyone else, completely optional. You can choose to participate it or not. So basically, you could keep your FEHB plan if you love it, not touch it, and you'll take Medicare A because it's free. And we'll, we'll break down the parts here in just a second. But you're not required to do any paid parts of the Medicare if you don't want to. Now, breaking down the four parts of Medicare. Medicare A is hospital costs. This is free 
to you in retirement. There's no monthly cost on this. And it covers, if you go to the hospital, it's going to cover hospital expenses. Okay. Medicare B is no, more like normal health insurance. This is going to cover more of that day-to-day -day normal stuff like doctor's visits, lab tests, x-rays, ambulance rides. Medicare B has a cost attached to it. For most people, this year's base plan cost is $164 a month. Depending on your total income, that could rate up. Um, so if you're in a higher income situation, it could be more than that. But for most people, this is going to be $164 per month here. Medicare Part C is GAP or Medicare Advantage coverage. So this is additional coverage you can get. Um, and we're going to we're going to circle back to Medicare Advantage. Um, but the, that that's what Medicare C is. If you're going to just keep traditional, the most common thing is that federal employees are going to do their federal health plan, Medicare A and B, you have two layers of coverage, and that's what most people do. So most federal employees don't have to worry about C and D, D being the prescription coverage. Um, but we're going to circle back to Medicare um, uh, supplemental or Medicare Advantage on, on Medicare C. But those are the four parts, hospital, regular health insurance, GAP or Medicare coverage, and prescription drug for D. All right. Um, so while you're employed, if you're 65 and older, you're still employed and you decide to take on Medicare A and B, then your federal health insurance would pay primary. Anything they don't cover then goes over to Medicare to see what they'll cover. And then it would go to you if it's not all covered. When you retire, that flip flops. If you have Medicare, that becomes the primary payer. And then your federal health insurance becomes your secondary payer. And then if you know, anything's left over, then it goes to you to out of pocket. So that's important to know that switch working FEHB's primary in retirement, uh, Medicare is going to be paying primary. So let's talk about part B on when you need to take it uh, or when you'd get uh, penalties if you don't take it and decide to take it later. So the rule on Medicare part B is that you need to take it at 65, or if you retire later, you don't need to take it until you, re until you retire, okay? So which, whichever comes later, 65 or retirement. And if you retire after 65, you have up to eight months to select to take uh, uh, Medicare B, and there will be no increase in the cost. For an example, let's say you retire at age 67, and you're like, ah, I don't want that Medicare stuff. And come 70, you get a chronic illness. And you're like, oh man, Medicare would be covering a lot of this stuff. Maybe I should take it. They're going to charge you a permanent increase in your premiums for every year you waited and didn't take it after you were eligible. Okay. So they do hold your feet to the fire. You need to be thinking about this ahead of time. So that when it comes time to decide on Medicare, you can make a confident decision because you don't want to delay it and then decide you need it, need it later. You're going to permanently pay, permanently pay higher premiums for that. Okay. So that's a breakdown of. Medicare. Now let's talk about um, for FEHB. This is an important thing that a lot of people do not understand. First, let's talk about cancellation. If you are retired and you decide, ah, I want to try something else, I, or they've got something else cool going on, or I just don't like this FEHB, I'm going to cancel it. That is an irreversible decision. You cannot go back. Once you cancel it, you are done with the program, never to come back. So that is a final decision. You've really got to understand that before you cancel it in retirement. However, there is a suspend option, very different. And there's two reasons why they'll let you suspend that. Number one is if you're eligible for TRICARE for Life, you can suspend your federal health coverage, go on to TRICARE for Life. If later down the road you decide, man, I missed that FEHB, you can get back onto that. You left yourself a backdoor option. The other reason why they'll allow you to do it is Medicare Advantage. If you're going on to a qualified Medicare Advantage plan, they'll let you suspend it. So you can basically try Medicare Advantage risk-free, and you still have that option to go back if you decide you didn't like it. The reason they've in opened this up is because for most people, their monthly costs are going to be lower by doing a Medicare Advantage plan than it is going to be to do your federal employee health benefit and uh, Medicare A and B. All right, so that's a very important to understand the huge difference between cancellation or uh, suspension in retirement. So I'm going to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about estate planning, uh, just because it's one of the services that we offer. Pretty soon, we're going to have estate planning, Medicare, uh, a, a tax practice, and of course, all of the financial planning, the education, 
uh, that, that, that we currently have. So you're going to be able to, we'll be a one-stop shop for a lot of federal employees for all of their financial uh, and uh, insurance needs. So estate planning. So this is living trusts and living wills. All right. So when you get an estate plan from a traditional estate planning attorney, you're paying between three and six thousand dollars generally. Okay. To get a trust, a will, financial, medical, and durable power of attorney. So five legal documents. We can do that same estate plan for you for fifteen ninety five out the door. Right. It's very simple. You work with our estate planning consultant. Once you get the information back to her. She's going to turn around and get your trust, your will, your powers of attorney within 48 hours, okay? We like to say about two to four days, but generally it's within 48 hours. So it is a much lower cost than what you would pay um, a traditional estate planning attorney. So if you're interested, let us know. We'll send you a brochure on that. And then finally, if you schedule an appointment with us, folks, you're going to be able to sit down with James and I. If we're not available, then you'll sit down with one of our five other federal retirement consultants. And we're going to take a deep dive into your benefits. We're going to explain them like you've never had them explained to you before. We're known pretty famously for taking the difficult and narrowing it down to the simplistic, giving you the digestible version of what matters most as it relates to your federal benefits package. We have nuances and tips and strategies and maximiz maximization um, paths that you can take that you might have never heard about before. It is in your best interest, most likely. Or, or, or most definitely to sit down with us. And you can request an appointment uh, in the link in the chat right now. So don't forget that you get a free copy of the um, informed Fed. Okay, so as we close up here, like we promised you, when we're done, we're gonna talk uh, or we're gonna do a little Q&A. So stick around for that, maybe five, 10 minutes past the hour. We've got about five minutes to the top of the hour. So maybe at about 10 to 15 minutes of that. Just remember our next informational, next educational event is June 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern Strategic Planning. This is our robust six part, six benefit um, um, uh, webinar where we go into sort of all of the, the nuts and bolts as it relates to the top level of those benefits. And then we'll actually do a live federal pension analysis, a federal pension calculation with someone in the audience and show you one of our retirement tools that we can use with you on the uh, federal benefit consultation. And we'll take a look at and do a TSP income analysis. We're going to do a lot of good, fun stuff there. And again, that's a 30 minute to hour long Q&A after that webinar is complete. And then our next lunch and learn, which is these short little 30 minute blasts into one subject is... Uh, as you can see, they're July 20th at 1230 Eastern. That link is also going in the chat, and it, I think it's already in there. So you can click on that. And that's if you want to know more about Fegley, Federal Employee Group Life Insurance. How does it work? What are the options? What are the payments? There's a lot of misinformation out there um, that sometimes leads people to make decisions that may or may not be in their best interest. So again, come to the horse's mouth. We will teach you exactly how the program works and give you some, some recommended strategies. So. James, did you want to um, do the survey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're gonna yeah, okay. we're gonna send you a quick survey. Our goal is to always get better and better of what at what we do. Get you guys better information and the type of information that you want to 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 receive. So, we encourage you to please uh, fill out the survey about today's webinar. We hope it was helpful. We hope it was educational. Um, and you'll get uh, this this publication: the top ten mistakes made by uh, federal employees filling out that survey. And we'd appreciate it. All right, and so now we're gonna we're gonna jump into some Q and A. Look at that; we finish up three minutes before the hour, better than better than promised. So we're just gonna start going back and forth, Justin and I, uh, and take turns uh, up until about you know forty past, um, because I see that there are a good amount of questions that are piling up in here. So we're gonna start uh, looking into these and and swapping off. Um, Justin, do you want to have go one? Ahead? Yeah, I have one ready to go since you're chatting. If you want to follow me, so. Maritza asks, would the estate planning include an executor and cost? If yes, and we move, can we continue with the executor? Um, the executor would have to be a decision that you make, um, and that would have to be depending on if the executor charges or not. We don't do that part of it. We just prepare everything else. Um, you need to determine what you want to do with the executor um, and how that works. Generally, if there's an executor and a trust, it is portable. Uh, to other states, but again, it might be a different answer for a specific type of executive relationship. 
All right. So Marcelo asked, what about federal retirees? Do you work with those? Absolutely. So anybody that's a federal employee or federal retiree slash annuitant, we can work with you and and and, and help you and, and provide those services and education. The last name, Abshaw asked, how can we schedule a one-on-one follow-up uh, for retirement? So uh, we're going to put the um, appointment request link in the chat box again here in the next uh, uh, few seconds. That way you can click on that. Uh, and we'll also be reaching out to everyone with a friendly, hello, would you like to schedule a consultation? So one way or the other, we'll make sure that you are taken care of. And then the other uh, question that I was uh, I had here, it looks like a lot of other ones came in, so I lost it. So James, if you're ready. Yeah, I've got one right here. Uh, okay. Marisa asked, if your spouse is a federal employee also and you are on their plan, does that co count towards the five-year requirement? Yes. So when we have two people that are married that are federal employees, we can do some pretty cool, um, I don't know, some maximizations. But yes, if you're covered under the FEHB, even if it's, you, if it's your spouse's plan, um, that still counts. And I, I saw another one that's along the same thread that what happens if you get married after retirement, um, that would be qualifying life event uh, where you could uh, throw them on marriage, divorce, uh, adoption, or birth of a child those you can add in. And of course, any open season, you could get a qualified person uh, onto your plan, uh, even in retirement. Yeah, great question there. And Sherry had a similar question. I'll expound on that a little bit. She said, my husband and I are both federal employees. We've been safe. We've been having FBHB through his account as a family. So a family plan. Should I or do I need to buy FBHB on my own? Thanks. That is a great question. Okay. So in retirement, if it's just the two of you, and there's still no other dependents, it's best to have each of you have your own FEHB plan. It's actually less expensive that way as well, okay? Now, when you start adding in, you know, um, uh, uh, children with disabilities or other dependents, it's not always straightforward, but in general, even if there is, you know, an element of a family member still on the plan, it is best in retirement in most cases to have individual plans because that also, not only will it save you money, but it'll also allow us, like James was saying, to do some other maximization strategies with another federal benefit or two, which opens up more opportunity than it would otherwise. All right. Uh, Cheryl asked, can you switch plans during the five years? Like from, absolutely. Yeah. So if you're on FEHB, you can switch plans any open season. If you're on Medicare Advantage, same thing every open season, you can, you can change your plan if you want. Okay, so Richard asked, I am still working and have a supplemental dental plan, Fed VIP, currently under FEHB. Would that still be covered under FEHB in retirement or would I need gap coverage? Well, it's not actually under FEHB, it's a supplemental plan and it's you, it, you still get the option to keep it in retirement, Fed VIP, and, and you continue to pay for it. So it is not connected to FEHB. You can have it by itself with or without FEHB. The only thing I'll add to that is the you have to be eligible for FEHB to be able to participate in Fed VIP, which so, is five years of service prior to right. retirement. Yep, exactly. Yep. Um, five con so, so Muhammad, five consecutive years with the same medical insurance provider, or five years having the FEHB. It's five years consecutive having the FEHB. You can change to a different provider every year at open season as long as you're covered by the FEHB system for five years consecutive leading up to retirement, you're eligible. There's so many questions coming in. It keeps, I know it's, they're piling up. So we got about five more minutes, everybody. We're not going to, I can tell you the list is getting long. We're not going to get to everybody's question, but so Deborah, schedule, you know, schedule a complimentary appointment with us. We're, we're happy to answer, but we're going to get through as many as we can in the next five. Deborah asked a good question. I had to join late due to meetings. Are the slides being provided separately? Apologies if you've already answered the question. A gazillion times. No, we haven't answered it a gazillion times. You're fine, Deborah. Um, actually, it's going to be available on our website in about two to three weeks. Not only this one, but Lunch and Learn series number two and Lunch and Learn series number one, folks. So you can catch up on everything that you've missed. All right, and and you're you're going to get access to all you need to do is is, is subscribe to uh, you know uh, our website, uh, be a subscriber, and you're going to have access to that along with a whole suite of discounted services, great free features, uh, lots of educational tools. So be on the lookout for that once we send that uh, email letting you know about the launch. 
All right, Gary has a really good question. Um, I'm glad he asked this. Thank you, Gary. My spouse is retired and is over 70. Having been on my federal employer sponsored health plan, will there be a penalty when the time comes for the spouse to get uh, part B plan? No, because they have been covered under an employer sponsored plan. It doesn't have to be their own. They can be on their spouses, just like in this situation, your spouse is on your employer covered plan. So it does create that deferral on when they need to decide if they're taking Medicare B or not. So thankfully thumbs up, no penalty. Whenever you do retire, your spouse can also take on Medicare B with no increased premiums. Debbie asks if you, if what you pay for Medicare part B is based on your retirement income, those in higher tax brackets will pay will pay more for part B. Correct. Yes, there's a there's a range uh, between the lowest cost and the highest cost. I think it's rough estimate between a hundred and like four hundred dollars at the top end. Usually, I think the average price is around one hundred and sixty. Okay, so yeah, you will be paying more uh, if you have a higher tax bracket, and it is definitely worth it. Um, and the second part of her question is, if so, when is what you will pay not worth be worth the added cost? And I'd say the answer is never. I think it's worth it to have Medicare Part B. Or in, 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 in a lot of cases, our, our second, our third option that we talked about earlier, which is to suspend FEHB, just have Medicare Part A and Advantage, okay? That actually might be a better idea. But again, we won't know until we do a, a thorough analysis with you. All right, uh, Francis, if you retire with two active insurances, do you have to take Part B? So keep in mind, unless you're a postal employee that wants to keep the postal health insurance you're not required at this point to take on Medicare B at all. Um, but if you have two active insurances and they're both under a retirement system and you decide later you want to take on Medicare B, you, there would be increases in premiums. Uh, if one of those is like a spouse's active employer sponsored one, that'll continue to defer when you need to make that Medicare B decision. And then um, John says, when doing a living trust, do you help make local changes, uh, e.g. E city recordings, uh, changes to titles, the trust names from individual names? Uh, so no, we don't actually do the retitling of any documents. We can get you a property deed and title the property that you have, real estate, in the name of the new trust. We can definitely do that, but we can't do all of the other stuff, putting your financials and everything else in the name of the trust. But that's something that, you know, you can do pretty simply. This is fun. Here's a name I know. Hi, Marlis. Uh, does uh, do the FAHB premiums increase if suspended option taken? No. You can go back on any open season and you're still just like any other annuitant. You're going to pay 28, approximately 28% of that year's plan cost. Doesn't matter if you uh, tried suspending it to go on um, one of the other options. And I think we have time for one more. And then uh, James, why don't you close us out after this one? Tatiana good. asks a good question. Is, is Medicare B priced per person or per family? It's per person. So if you have a spouse who's dependent on FEHB in retirement, you will want your own Medicare Part B and they will want their own Medicare Part B. Okay. And that'll help. Like, like we're talking about the coverage in retirement is robust when you retire. Some of those robust coverage aspects are no longer there. So we need to offset that. We need to fill those gaps with part B for both people and or advantage. So all right. that's all I have for tonight. I'm going to let James close this. Thank you so much, folks. These are some fantastic questions. We'll get to a lot more of them if we schedule consultation with you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for spending some of your day with us. Um, there's just a huge list of questions. We, we could be here for a very long time. This is obviously a, a topic that a lot of people wanted some information on. We hope it was helpful. If you need additional information, please schedule a cons uh, you know, complimentary consultation with us. We'd love to get to know you in your situation and be able to answer specific questions for them, uh, for those. Uh, thank you once again. Look forward to seeing you on a future training or on a one-on-one -on -one call. Be safe. Be kind out there. Thanks for coming.